Okay. Eleven. He didn't get no. the worst of it, no. I don't think he hit anything. He Fish, rolled can, it again. Fish, can you look around there and get me numbers? Try Let's get some numbers, please. Yeah. I got 10 and 11. Probably got a flat tire. Uh, mm -hmm. There's more in the grass down towards turn one. Caution is out at Daytona at lap 15 in the Napa 300. Jeff Green, last year's runner-up, there he is climbing. He's already got his cap on. Wow. After flipping that car at 190 miles an hour, he's got a sponsor cap on and walking away. <laughs> I guess he's all right. Boy, that just tells you how well these cars have built, and the roll cage did its job because he turned over several times down the front straightaway. Hat rack made out okay, too. Finished second in this race last year, second in the point standings. There's uh, Kelly Denton's car, number 75. He was involved. Kelly is okay, surveying the damage. Jason Jarrett was one of the cars involved. Uh, also Phil Parsons, Wayne Grubb. And Jason Jarrett drove away from the, from the uh, accident. He spun out. I don't think he hit anything hard. It's the Pamico Chevy of uh, Mike Skinner. Mike Skinner. <laughs> Uh, he says he can't turn the car. He tells the crew, so he's going to take it behind the wall. One more car there against the wall. A few blocked by the safety truck. Uh, I believe that's the 83 of Wayne Grubb. And yeah, he's he, okay. He's out checking the damage, see if he can fix it if they take him back into the garage area. But this is a very important finish. It's a point race. Even though you tear your car up, you try to get back in the action if you possibly can. They're pushing uh, Mike Skinner, the Lowe's on board camera, in Skinner's car. Now, in the driver's meeting, they told uh, the drivers and teams, if you bring your car to the garage, you have one chance to fix it and get, take as long as you want. But when you bring that car back onto the speedway, if it's not able to run at competitive speed, the next trip to the garage, the last one for the day, you'd have to park it. So uh, you see members of Skinner's crew going to work. Let's see what happened here coming through the tri-oval. Jeff Green gets a little assistance there from behind. And you can see the car just lifting off the ground right there. It rolls several times here, but you notice the part that he's in does not really hit the racetrack. It rolled on the nose and then settled down on the racetrack. The flaps did their job. They have flaps in the roof of these cars to keep them from flying and just keep on flying. It dropped right down. Tim Fito was one of those who went spinning. Pit stops. The order of the day for most of the teams, Bob Evans' team, that's Randy LaJoy's car in the pits and at work running around there with the Jack Robert Larkin. Just about everybody has pitted. Finishing up on LaJoy. And there's 59, Phil Parsons. McLaughlin comes out, his wife Katie due to give birth any day, maybe any hour now. Oh, you see Casey Atwood was backing up there, almost making contact with the car coming out of the pits. Atwood gets away okay. If we saw Fidoa in the pit. He was able to drive back in after a long slide through the grass. There's a little cosmetic damage on Phil Parsons and Jason Jarrett. That was the 10 car of Jeff Green. Here we see Phil Parsons in the pits. You know, Ned, that looked like a nasty wreck fixing to happen when the car went up the air, but it come down just as quick as it went up. So that, that tells you the roof flaps really employed and put that car back on the racing surface. Somebody got into the back of, of Jeff Green. I think I'd have to see one more replay to be, to be positive about who that might have been. But you see there's damage here to several cars. So here's Jeff Green. And she is We'll come up on him here. Okay, they're just now coming in the dog leg. Right here, they make contact. You can see him getting sideways right there. Now watch the car just lift right off the ground about here and starts to fly. I can tell you, those cars on the outside, they're going, let me get by. And everybody missed him as he slides across there. Look at Fidoa just shoot right through all that traffic to the infield grass without getting hit. I believe the car that made contact uh, was Bobby Hamilton Jr., number 26. It, 
it looked to me as if Hamilton was as low on the racetrack as he could be. There's his white car. He's right down against the white line. He looked like, like Green might have come down a little bit as he went through the crowd. Well, and at that place, the car is very, very light. And you can, if you could physically get your hand out the window, you could make a car slide by just touching it with your hand. That's how light they are in that area of the racetrack. The luckiest fellow in Daytona right then was Tim Fidoa because he locked the car down and cut it left and came all the way across without incident. Let's ride with Jeff Green. He saw that opening down there on the inside groove and was going to drive, go down there and try to pick up the draft. And uh, Bobby Hamilton Jr. is right there from Joe Nemechek's car. I said, boy, I was glad to get through there. <laughs> and that was Fido while you saw shooting across the track in front. And Jeff Green once more. He dives down to the inside, doesn't quite get in that low roof until he hits the other car. And like Buddy said, it doesn't take much at that point of the racetrack. Boy, that's a nasty feeling when you see sky dirt, sky dirt. Yeah. I'm telling you, I've been there. It's not a pleasant thought. I'm afraid that's the last picture from our Nesquik cam today. We're under caution at Daytona. Getting set for the restart here in the Napa 300 at Daytona after a big flip now. Here comes the yellow car of Jeff Green. Round off the nose of Bobby Hamilton Jr. Chevy. Boy, was he fortunate not to get T-boned when he when he came back on his wheels. So Great job of driving. It was. Uh, those other drivers. Yes, just to miss that. 